Here we go. And the pliers are just some cheap pliers, modified by cutting the front off, sticking in the vise, drilling a hole in the nose at the uh, appropriate diameter to allow it to grab that button. And again I'll recover the spring and put that to one side. Screw here holds the sprocket and the sprocket shaft together. The sprocket shaft should lift out. With that, the top bush will lift out, and here's the clutch. And the clutch will come apart. I'll remove the screw from the top of the release shaft. Recover the screw. The screw goes in the wash. The spring goes with the springs. We'll lift this shaft out the bottom of the camera. And I'm going to lift off its spring at the base because otherwise it'll only end up getting lost or damaged in the cleaning. Here we've got a clip, a C clip or an E clip depending on who you're speaking to. We'll have that off, put the spring away with the springs, let the shaft drop out the bottom of the camera. We've got a spring here for the catch, for the rewind button. So I'll unhook that spring, remove the screw. Spring away with the springs. Rewind button catch through to the cleaner. Three screws here. Hold the guide bush on the base of the film advance shaft. Sometimes they're loose, but not today. Alright, lift that shaft out, pull the bush back, retrieve the three screws. And the grease here is very dry and sticky. That'll all have to be cleaned and all the muck removed. A sprocket can fell out. Here's our take-up spool. Just recovering the metal bush from the bottom of the take-up spool. That goes in the cleaner. The sprocket and the uh, take-up spool, they don't need to go through the ultrasonic. So the body's looking a bit stripped out. Tripod socket next. I'll put a drop of naphtha on there in case those screws are gummed up with glue. Certainly tight. Unusual for the tripod socket. Tripod sockets suffer a lot of abuse, so they the screws tend to get stressed and stretched, and as a result, are usually loose. Not in this case. Is there tripod socket? And this piece is the little base where your film cassette would sit. It doesn't need to go through the cleaner, there's no point. Okay, at that stage, our body's probably as stripped down as we normally need to get it. Um, important things to note, the mirror. Don't get your fingers on the mirror. If it will come, come loose easily, It's sometimes better to remove it and put it aside for safekeeping. 
Sometimes this is held in with a couple of spots of adhesive to help it stay in place. The, these little spring tabs here also hold it down. It looks like I can lift that out. And I think I will. I've got a bad track record of getting fingerprints on reflex mirrors. Okay, so I'll get some toothpicks. See if I can lift that mirror up. And slide it forward. There you go, it's moving now. A bit more and I can grab it. Here we go. Slide that out. Yeah. Surface silvered mirror, exceptionally delicate. Don't touch it with anything. I'll tip wrap that up very carefully in a soft tissue. And put it to one side. I don't want that coming to any harm at all. It's much more delicate than an exposure meter. Okay. Well, that's a load off my mind. With that uh, piece put aside, everything else is relatively robust. So, with my camera body. Well, these mechanical parts are all going to have to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. I give them 15 minutes in solvent. To loosen up all that grease and adhesive and rubbish and then they get 15 minutes in hot water with a strong domestic detergent and uh, rinsed carefully under a hot tap and then dried carefully with a hair dryer and the parts come back looking like new in fact looking better than new they look wonderful so this adhesive and rubbish on the casting how is it going to come off Sometimes it comes off well by scraping it. I'm scraping it with the back edge of my scalpel here. That's coming away quite nicely. If it comes off like that, you better to do it that way than use solvents. If you use solvents, sometimes that works very well, but you can end up using an awful lot of solvent trying to dissolve a thick layer like this. If it'll break away nicely like this, then the surface will just need a wipe with solvent and it'll be ready for the new leatherettes or the old leatherettes in this case to be glued back on properly. So here, this is the, the result of at least two layers of adhesive, two different adhesives, and you can see why I was enthusiastic to remove that mirror before I got to this stage. You just end up with it covered in bits of dust and rubbish if you left it in the body. Well that's one side, you can see all the rubbish that come off. We'll give that a wipe with some uh, acetone now. And it, that may clean up that surface nicely. I may have to use a different solvent. I'll give you a quick look before the video camera battery dies. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, that's 
cleaning away very very well with acetone so this is just removing the faint traces left after I'd scraped that off So that's one side of the front. I've got to do the base and the other side in the same fashion. And then I can start cleaning up the body as I normally would do, ready for reassembly. Hopefully the parts will be clean in the ultrasonic cleaner by then and I can start putting things back together. Well there'll be no reassembly without clean leatherettes to put back on the camera. These are bit nasty with the caked on rubbish so I've got to see if I can get it off first I'll see how much will scrape off dry if the leatherettes are in poor condition, if they're quite brittle, be very careful about doing things like this because you can easily break the leatherettes apart well that's about as much as is going to come off there as easily as that I'm going to try a bit of naphtha and see if that will soften that adhesive up I'll just wet down that part in the middle and see if it scrapes off better. If it softens the adhesive it will scrape away very very easily. That looks quite good. You have to be a bit cautious about using solvent of any sort around leatherette because it can damage leatherettes Naphtha is reasonably benign. And the object of cleaning the leatherettes is twofold, really. It's to get a good surface that will actually take adhesive and stick well and reliably it's also to get all the lumps and bumps off so that when the leatherette goes back on it lies nice and flat So although the state of the leatherettes, even the appearance of the leatherettes doesn't have much bearing on the function of the camera, it does have a big bearing on the appearance of the camera and if you're doing an overhaul on something it should look like it's been overhauled by the time you're finished. It should the appear the appearance of it should be improved. That's looking quite good. There's certainly more adhesive at this end um, than the other. May mean it's may mean that piece of leather it's been up and glued back more times than the rest somebody might have peeled that back in order to get it the film advance control gear
Oh no, that wouldn't really explain it. Not in this camera. You've got to take the whole base plate off in order to get at anything. So I can't really explain that. But it certainly shows a difference at this end than it does elsewhere. Anyway, that's nice and clean under there now. And that's what it started like. So now I've just got to work my way through the other three pieces and put them aside so that when I come to the final reassembly it'll be a, a nice clear run home. Here I've got the camera body all clean, ready for reassembly. So I'll start putting components back into the camera. And I'll start with the tripod sockets and uh, back because otherwise every time you clonk this thing down on the bench the back releases which gets very very tedious after about the second time it happens. So first things first there's the little insert that your film cassette will sit in there are three screws hold this in place and they look like that in case you hadn't uh, been carefully laying out your parts so you knew where everything came from Get all three screws started before you go around and tighten them up. Alright, that's the little problem over. Now the back won't spring open on, the, on me and annoy me no end. I'll do the rewind knob next. Rewind shaft. So, a bit of synthetic grease into the bush. There's a little brass spring in there that provides the tension to stop the uh, rewind shaft slopping about. That's held in place with two screws. Countersunk screws, fairly large heads. Noticeably bigger than the small ones that hold the, the base plate trim plate in place. They shouldn't be able to mix them up. Now, I want to put my lock lever and release lever in place, so I'm going to run some molybdenum and paste down the guide holes in the body casting, top and bottom, and here where the return spring, or the tension spring for the release lever runs against that. Here's the lock lever. The lock lever's job is of course to lock the film advance when you reach frame number one. Now there are two springs that look much the same. It's the smaller lighter spring that goes onto the lock lever. Now if I hold that spring compressed with my thumb, I'm supporting the shaft from underneath with my finger, I should be able to get the little circle up line that up with the slot on the shaft 
and normally it just presses straight in but today it doesn't it's just to annoy me just press that in with the heel of my tweezers that's our lock lever working correctly but the release lever that has a small spring on the base that spring's job is to keep the lock lever the release lever in contact with the cam on the bottom of the film advance and I always remove this when I'm cleaning stuff because it's easily damaged and now I've got to get it put back into place and that one went very smoothly that's seated around that post that can go in the base of the camera and feeds up through the casting take great care not to get that spring damaged make sure it's inside that well not sitting on the outside and being bent here's our return spring which is busy causing me grief I'm supporting the shaft from underneath with my finger here's the screw here's the spring jumping out for good measure here's the screw that goes in the top now the shaft split so it provides some friction on that screw thread and that's so it'll hold its adjustment now I'll screw that down until there's only perhaps a millimetre of thread visible above that line that's probably a good place to start All right. next here's the film advance shaft and the first thing I'm doing here is checking that the ratchet wheels on the bottom here are firmly riveted to the shaft if the camera has been bashed on its base and the film advance lever has taken the shock this it can actually loosen up here and uh, you can restake that rivet, riveted piece to make it firm if that's the case it's just quite tedious and it's quite hard to get it to do it so that everything is nice and square because typically if it does bite the dirt hard, things bend, um, stuff doesn't want to go back square. Alright, so that looks good. So I've got to lubricate that. Typically I lubricate this with some graphite grease that I've got. And I have uh, just about run out of. Because this works well for this particular task. It's quite... Uh, quite sticky it stays on the shaft it's it's tacky I suppose you'd say it stays on the shaft yeah, I'm pulling back that bush so I can get to the shaft so that it remains lubricated in there and run some on the spring as well because that gets wound up quite tight and you want that to the coils of that spring to roll over each other quite smoothly that's good now the cam surfaces on this wheel on this piece I normally lubricate those with synthetic grease which is quite different in its properties it's not uh, it's not as tacky and in that, this place that's an advantage all right that lubricated bring back the body open the camera back we've got our film cassette our film spool take up spool there put the metal bush back in the base 
drop that into the body, close it. Let's flip this up. Come on, video camera, hurry up. It's thinking about focusing. And we've got to get this in place. So normally with retinas, the usual pattern is you're wanting one full turn of tension on the return spring for the rewind. I'm making sure I've got this lined up. Yeah, that looks okay. So normally you're wanting one full turn of tension, so you would start with it in that position, the start position. We could do with a third more turn tension here. So I'm going to start with this up in that position. I can line things up. Pull back this. Let's flip the lock lever up out of the way. Pull back my release lever. Should be able to drop this into the into the take-up spool. I'm just going to check that that went into the take-up spool neatly, that the spring didn't get displaced and end up jammed in the bush. That's all good. So where am I placed here? On that there, where's the holes? I've got to line up the holes of course so I can actually get the screws through if I can find where those there. No, it's just moved on me just to annoy me. There, that's where I want to be. And when I fit the film advance lever and so forth, I will have one and a third turns of tension on that advance so that the advance lever returns to the rest position smoothly. There's three screws to get in here. They're the same size as the screws that we hold the trim plate on the base. Typically they'll be the ones that aren't covered in the remains of glue and leatherette. Here everything's been through the ultrasonic cleaner so all the screws look clean. Okay, here yeah, the screw's going to go in. Just having trouble getting this third screw to start. There we go. Just looking to make sure all three screws has, has started, that they're in and they're square. Nothing's gone in cockeyed, cross-threaded, or any other unfortunate combination of the same. Check that they're all tight, that looks good. Right, that's that part. Now I need to flip the camera and start working on the uh, top of the film advance. I find this is a handy thing to do. This is our surround from the tripod socket. I just put that directly underneath the film advance. It saves this getting displaced and it means I can work on the top here without that getting pushed down and causing me grief.